Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the 4 hour most bullish scenario where we are looking at a finished regular flat 3 wave A, 3 wave B and a 5 wave C to the downside, hitting the common target area for C taken from the high to the low of A to the high of B, which is the 1 to 1 trend based Fib extension. In this scenario we are then looking for bullish continuation to the upside and on the 1 hour chart the most bullish scenario is a finished double one two with the potential for a triple one two and then impulsive continuation to the upside to continue the trend and move above 74k. In this scenario the first wave 2 retraced to the 0.382 Fibonacci taken from the low to the high of wave 1 which is an uncommon target for a wave 2 but a target nonetheless and especially in stronger trends the 382 can be a bit more common. The second wave 2 of a lower degree hit the 0.5 Fibonacci taken from the low to the high of this wave 1 which is a common target and then we have the lowest degree Elliott wave count in wide for another 1, 2 and continuation meaning the highest degree is the green count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 inside the green wave 3 we have the blue 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so another impulse and then in the blue wave 3 we have the white 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you really expect after a triple 1, 2 to have a massive move towards the upside because it is going to be a wave 3 of a wave 3 of a bigger wave 3. And a wave 3 generally has the highest volume of a move, is most impulsive and is the strongest. Now the common target for this wave 2 here taken from the low to the high where potentially a 5 wave move is finished here is most commonly between the 05 and the 786. 65.7k to 64.8k taken from the low to the current high that we have. The 0.3A2 here is a uncommon target 66.1k and the 886 is a target that we don't want to hit. In a wave 2 we are looking for a 3 wave corrective structure to the downside and we do have a little bit of support in this area. We have the daily naked point of control here at 66k and if we pull a volume profile then you can see that also the value area high in confluence with the 05 and the point of control of this area so far is around the 786 which makes that an interesting area of support. The second bullish scenario is that we are forming a bigger diagonal structure to the upside in a 1, 2, 3, for five, looking for a three wave move to the downside before then continuation to the upside. Here we are then looking for a contracting diagonal preferably where this wave 4 is not going to hit the lower trend line of the channel because if price is moving to the downside and hits the lower trend line we have to talk about expanding diagonals and an expanding diagonal is very rare never preferred unless all of the other stuff fails. So therefore preferably we have a 1, 2, 3, 4 somewhere and then eventually a move to the upside in wave 5. Wave 3 in this case is a zigzag structure and then a wave A, B and a wave C. 1, 2, 3 or 5, 3 wave correction and another 5 wave move where the 1 to 1 common target for a wave C taken from the low to the high of A to the low of B is hit. Now because in a leading a diagonal all of the waves in this case once wave 3 is a 3 wave structure have to be 3 waves meaning 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 all of these have to be zigzag structures. It also means wave 1 has to be a zigzag structure which is a little bit awkward to count you really have to go to the 3 minute time frame to try and find a zigzag in here but let's just focus on the new information that is coming. Because in this scenario we are looking for a wave 4 which therefore has to be a zigzag structure in an ABC common target for wave 4 taken from the low of 2 to the high of 3 is between the 236 and the 05 66265.1k and then we want to see another zigzag to the upside another three wave structure preferably actually hitting this resistance area that I have above price sitting between 68.2k and 69.2k that then would be the high of our wave 1. Now important is that wave 5 in white is not allowed to be longer than wave 3 as well. And that is what the 1 to 1 here represents with the invalidation. So that trend based sub extension is taken from the low to the high of 3. And I put it on top of the 3A2 at the moment where you can see this 1 to 1 is at 69.9k and wave 5 is not allowed to hit that level. 
It is very normal, however, for a wave five to overshoot the one three trend line in a diagonal. So that is something we can keep an eye on. Now, after a wave one in blue, as this leading diagonal is then part of a wave one, we are looking for a three wave corrective structure in two and eventually continuation to the upside in a bigger wave three. A small detail on the 15 minute time frame is that we made a high, moved to the downside, back to the upside, and we hit the local 886. Now the 886 is a rare target for a wave 2, common target for a wave B or a wave X, which increases the probabilities that the move to the downside here is either a wave C or a wave Y, which increases the probabilities that anything that comes after the current price action is corrective and that the probabilities are higher to sooner or later take the two highs that we have here locally. If we go back to the 4 hour time frame, then the bearish scenario is a continuation of this range sideways where the regular flat that we have here in our ABC is only a wave A or a wave W of a bigger WXY or a bigger ABC expanding flat. An expanding flat is more common than a regular flat or a running flat. Now the common target for your wave X is the 05 to the 886 area taken from the high to the low sitting between 72.2 and 66.7k. Common target for wave B in an expanding flat the 1.236 to 1.38, 77.2 to 79.2k. We are however in both cases looking for a, a three wave structure to the upside. So if price is just going to move towards the upside in a straight line, for example, with that triple one two scenario, one two, one two, maybe another one two and then a big push, then we are looking for continuation. So for these scenarios, we need at least something like this for wave X or of course potentially a bigger one for a wave B. And it is most common in a wave X and a wave B to have a zigzag structure. So then we would be looking for a wave A, B and a wave C, five, three, five wave structure, after which we then look for a wave Y or a wave C to the downside. Considering the CVD divergences, locally there's not too much going on. All the bullish CVD divergences that we had already played out and at the moment price is just ranging here. There's not really any divergences forming after the recent high, so we have to be very, very patient. So if we then look at the probabilities of the different scenarios, then on the weekly time frame, probabilities are higher for a continuation of the trend sooner or later to take the highs at 74k compared to any bearish scenarios where we are looking for much, much, much lower prices. On the four hour chart, this range over here, the probabilities are also higher for the bullish scenario where a wave C of a regular flat has ended and we are looking for price to move towards the upside. Even in a bearish scenario where we look for a wave X or a wave B, we would be looking for a three wave structure to the upside. And at the moment, this over here doesn't look like a three wave structure. So actually also in a bearish case, we would expect price to still move towards the upside. And then on the 15 minute time frame, we have the multi 1 to 1 to 1 to, and of course the diagonal as well. Now the volume currently locally hasn't been too great. We have a little bit of a bump here, so that is something. But if we are going to finish a multi 1 to, we definitely want to see a big impulsive move to the upside and volume increasing. So after a triple, double one, two, we want to see that volume. That's something that we have to pay attention to. However, in both cases with the diagonal as well as the one, two, one, two, one, two, the triple one, two, we look for another local high and we also touched that 886 and we do have some interesting resistance right above. I hope that this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye bye.